On previous episodes, I've shown you how to write Bash, Arduino, and Python scripts for the Edison. This time, we're going to be using Intel's XDK development environment in order to write a simple JavaScript program. This program is going to host a simple web server on the Edison and serve up an HTML page. And every time a client connects, it'll flash an LED. Now, I've tried a few different ways of programming the Edison, and currently this is my favorite way to do it. To use it, we're going to be using Node.js, and as it turns out, Node has an interesting history. In 2008, Google released a JavaScript engine called V8 for the Chrome browser. V8 compiles JavaScript to native machine code with the intent of making JavaScript run much faster in browsers. Then, in 2009, a programmer by the name of Ryan Dahl released a program named Node.js that combines the V8 engine and non-blocking architecture to run JavaScript. The idea here was to handle more web requests at a time, and it was useful for real-time web applications like communications and gaming apps. Two years later, the NPM package manager was also added to Node. For this, we're going to need an Edison, a base block, a GPIO block, a breadboard, some jumper wires, an Edison hardware pack, an NPN transistor, an LED, a 100 ohm and a 1K ohm resistor, screwdriver, and some pliers. First up, we need to build the block stack. Add some standoffs to the Edison, and then attach the Edison to the base block. Then attach those two to the GPIO block. If you haven't done so already, solder some headers facing away from the Edison to the GPIO block. Put the block stack on the breadboard with the Edison hanging over the edge. Then place a transistor and an LED into the breadboard. We'll need to use a transistor since the GPIO block can't quite power an LED. Connect a 1K ohm resistor to the base of the transistor. This will restrict current flowing into the base as we don't need a lot of current in order to turn on the transistor. Then connect a 100 ohm resistor to the anode of the LED. This is the side without the flat edge. We'll need this in order to limit current flowing through the LED. We can't take more than about 20 milliamps. Connect 3.3 volts from the GPIO block to the collector of the transistor. Connect GP12 to the 1K resistor. Connect the emitter of the transistor to the 100 ohm resistor. Then connect the cathode of the LED to ground back on the GPIO block. Now we need to install the Intel XDK IoT Edition. Navigate to software.intel.com, en-us, IoT, hardware, Edison, downloads, and find and download the installer for your operating system. I'll use Windows. Run the installer and follow the prompts until you get to the component selection screen. You'll need to deselect Arduino and select XDK IoT Edition. I'm also going to deselect Flash Image since I've already updated my Edison, but feel free to keep this on if you need to run an Edison update. Click Next and follow prompts accepting all defaults. For Windows especially, watch for and accept pop-ups when the process asks to install other drivers. When the installation process is done, run the XDK. In Windows, you'll find this under Intel IoT Developer Kit. You'll be asked to create an Intel Developer Profile. Go ahead and do that. Back in the XDK, create a new project. You'll want to go to Internet of Things Embedded Application, blank template. Give your project a name. I'll name mine XDK underscore web server, and click Create. There's a good bit of code for this project, so we've included a link to the full code in the description below. The first part, we'll need to load in the required libraries, and we do that with the require command. Then we'll want to set which port we want the server to be on. We're going to be using libmraa to define a new pin. Notice that the second true here means that we want to use raw mode, so that 12 points to GP12, which is also listed on the GPIO block. And then we'll want to set the pin as output. We then create a new HTTP server using the HTTP library. Then we want to set the response. When a browser requests a web page from our server, we're going to send 200 first as a status code. This means success. And then we'll send some HTML. After that, we turn on our LED and set a timer to turn off the LED in 500 milliseconds. The idea here is that the LED flashes every time we serve the web page. And finally, we add this callback function, server.listen. This prints a message to the console whenever the server starts. You'll want to save this with file save all. Make sure that the Edison is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your computer. Click on IoT device in the XDK. You should see the Edison's IP address. If you have a password set on your Edison, enter it and then click Connect. Finally, click Upload, and if asked, say Save and Proceed. When done, click the Run button. In a new browser, this can be your phone, computer, really anything in the same network as the Edison. Go to your Edison's IP address, colon 4242, and you should see our page appear. 
When you refresh that page, watch the LED flash on the Edison. There's a lot going on here. The Edison is actually running a web server, which means that when a browser connects from another computer, the Edison actually sends it some HTML. The browser then interprets that HTML and displays it in a human-readable format. On the next episode, we'll be using JavaScript again to create a smartphone web app that interacts with the server running on the Edison. So stay tuned. <laughs>